Welcome everyone, this is Zanta with Repo Products. Today's video is on Revit 2022 and the new feature for tapered walls. Here I am in Autodesk Revit 2022. I'll start a new project. I'll pick the architectural template file and we'll take a look at this new feature. I'll head over to the wall command and heading over to the type selector, I'm going ahead and pick a few different types of walls to test this functionality. I did test this earlier and found that there are three wall types so far that you cannot use the tapered function on. And that is this first one, brick and CMU on metal stud. Also on the storefront curtain walls, all three of them, and then on the stacked walls. They don't have that function capable, but the rest we can. So I'm going to use this exterior brick on CMU. I'll go ahead and draw the wall. I'll switch this over to a fine level of detail and shade it. And then I'm going to draw a few instances of it. Oops. And then one more here. Let's go take a look at it in uh, 3D. If we take a look at the first one, if we head over to the type properties and head over to a uh, plan view of it, we can get into the structure and edit the makeup of the structure. Now in order for the uh, tapered function to work properly, you have to make sure you put a check mark under variable for any one of the particular layers of the materials of the wall. So for example, if I wanted the brick to have a taper, then I would put a check mark for variable here. I'll click OK. And then over in the properties panel, instance property, we have a cross section down here. And you have vertical, you have slanted, which was introduced in 2021. And then you have tapered. So I'm going to leave the first one as vertical. I'm going to take the second one and switch it to slanted. So you can see that if I put a 5% slant on it, it will slant in that direction. And then the third, if I switch this over to tapered, it doesn't initially look like it does anything, but it actually gives you initial um, uh, values for the slant angle for either end of the wall. So if I go in here and I type in 5, it's going to let me know that I'm creating an override instance. Um, and if I click create an instance override, it will automatically put in the slant at 5 degrees here. And over in the instance property, you'll see interior angle is at 5 degrees. If I change the top one here that says exterior angle to 10, then you'll see how it adjusts. If I go and take a look at this in section, just so you have a little bit better view of what's going on. And we'll switch this to a fine level of detail and shade it as well. You can see here is the tapered wall. And it shows the tapering is just of the brick. The 5% interior angle taper really kind of positions the entire wall assembly and moves it at that angle. So if I switch this back to zero, you'll see that our taper on the exterior end, um, exterior angle side is 10 degrees. Now that's if you put a check mark under the brick layer. Okay. If I go in into the type properties again, and I change the variable check mark from brick to, let's say, something like the, the core structural boundary layer. That what ends up happening is that that tapering only affects that particular core, um, that particular layer. And if you notice very carefully, when I go back into the type properties, I cannot have more than one check mark for variable for multiple layers of the wall. So the minute I check brick, it unchecks the concrete masonry structural core boundary layer. So it doesn't look like I can place more than one check mark for multiple layers. Um, another thing that I wanted to test while we were here is if I switch this to section and zoom down into the bottom, I can click modify to select that layer right there and I can unlock that layer you have to make sure your mouse arrow hit point is directly on the lock and the lock lights up. Then once it's unlocked, you'll see that when you go to select the geometry, you'll have an additional arrow. So I'm going to pull this core layer down. 
and you can see how you can make that adjustment. So this change that I made applies to the type property and it's not necessarily instance based so it affects both uh, the vertical wall and the slanted wall as well as the tapered wall. So if we take a look at this in 3D again and shade it, we can kind of get a better idea of what we're looking at. This is kind of an interesting new feature in Revit 2022 um, to have tapered walls like this because I can see people maybe using it to do a um, retaining wall situation on a landscaping or maybe even using it to do, say, some kind of a buttressing type of situation on a design. Uh, maybe they want to make a fancy column and they don't want to necessarily make a custom column. They can just introduce a tapered wall and have it um, bump out at, towards the base. So that's the uh, new feature for tapered walls in Revit 2022. Thank you very much for watching.